Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craftastic, and today I'm going to make some sticker storage, and I want to make it for holiday stickers, and not just Christmas or Halloween or Easter or whatever. I want to be able to combine all the holidays or monthly occasions, however you want to describe it. I have little stickers here and there that I would like to organize in one space. So. I decided I was going to try and make just another version of this, which you can find the tutorial for this one. Uh, I'll link it in the I card up above and try to remember to put a link to it in the description box below. But I just kind of wanted to do a different take because I didn't want to just use like Christmas papers or non holiday papers or Halloween papers. I wanted to do something different. Um, if I can't put all the holidays on the paper, then yeah, let's do something different. So what I decided to do was try and do a clear cover instead of using scrapbook paper. So this is gonna be an ex another experiment, my first time doing this. So what I'm gonna do, instead of having a spine that comes over like this, we'll just have a plain spine. And I think I have done that before, but I, I think I was using decorative card stock or scrapbook paper when I did it. So this time, this whole thing is gonna be Duralar and laminate. So hopefully it'll work out. I'm gonna cut two pieces at six and three quarters by five and a half. Let me make sure. Uh, yeah, six and three quarters in height and five and a half inches wide. So I need four pieces of Mmm, maybe I need five and a quarter. I'm gonna do five and three eighths because I need to allow some room to fold right here. So five and three eighths. So this is Duralar. It is an acetate alternative and it is heat resistant. So it's like acetate, but you can run it through a laminator without worrying about it melting in your laminator or warping. And I'm going to need two sheets of Duralar. So, and each sheet has like a piece of tissue paper over it to protect it from scratches and things of that nature. So, and I will link to the Duralar in the description box below if you're interested. So, we need six and three quarters in height am i gonna be able to get two out of this let's see oh yeah i think so so i think this is nine by twelve so six and three quarters in height five and three eighths in width. So we're going to five, one, two, three eighths. Then for the spine, I kind of wanted a two inch spine, but I think I can use these two pieces to make the spine. So what is the width of this? It's a little over two. I think I'm gonna leave it this wide and just go on and cut the height at six and three quarters. So basically I'm just using two pieces of Duralar and this is what scrap I have so far. Okay, so this would be our front pocket, back pocket, because I am gonna make these pockets. Did I mention that? Yes, I'm gonna make turn these into pockets, hopefully. So I'm sorry about the glare, but this is pretty much an all glare project. Um, <laughs> I'm going to use two sheets of laminate 
because this is going to be too wide for one sheet. Now, like I did with the other one, I could just laminate up to the spine like here and then let this other piece meet it in the middle here or overlap the spine on either side. I think it's probably better to overlap it. Uh, so, if I cut it at eight inches, I'm gonna do eight inches and hope for the best. So let's move these over. Hopefully I'm not picking up too much, bit, too many bits of paper off of my desk. So I'm gonna cut these at eight and hope I'm not wasting laminate. So eight inches. Now the reason I'm using two is because these pouches are not long enough to accommodate the full length of this um, book that we're making. So we have to use two pouches. We run it through with one pouch and then add the other pouch. Uh, and I'll have to show you how that goes. So I'm going to remove the tissue paper because we don't want to accidentally stick that. And then I'm going to try and just center this as best as possible and keep uh, the pieces of Duralar together. And I've had people ask me how do I um, get this to work without it being cloudy it really i think it really depends on the laminate pouch that you're using um and how hot your laminator gets you need a really hot laminator i think um and even even still sometimes they come out cloudy uh i don't know why it just happens so it's not going to work for every, everyone, I guess, but it seems to work fairly well for most people. So I just put the spine in there and left a little space in between. Now this is an instance where I probably need my, uh, my mat, my cutting mat, because it has the measurements on it, but I have this on top of my mat at the moment. So we're just gonna have to work around that. Let's put the Duralar in here. Let's see, we wanna go this way. Now, I think we're gonna run one through and then come back and put this one on top of it like this and run it through. And that should work. So let's run this one through. We got one cover. Well, I will guess this is the back cover, the spine. We're going to run that through. I've already got my laminator heated up. I'm going to turn it so that the seam, the closed side of the laminate pouch goes through first. And let me just take one last look and hope everything is straight. Um, let me do this. If you're working on a, a white surface or a light surface, it helps to have, yeah, see that's crooked. It helps to have something that is darker so that you can see where all the pieces are. And then it also kind of helps to have something to feed the laminate into the laminator. 
And if you're working at an angle, I don't have any advice on that. You know, some of the uh, laminators come in from the top. Uh, I prefer the ones that feed like this horizontally because I'm always doing stuff that laminator really isn't made to do. And it's just easier to do it that way. Hoping that this comes out right. See this crinkle here? I, I didn't put it in there straight. Hopefully that won't cause too big of an issue. Okay, it didn't. Okay, so I see a little fuzziness <laughs> of lint, but other than that, it seems to have done okay. So let's get this one lined up as best as possible. And I don't think that these have to be in the exact same position in the laminate as long as you line them up here because it would be pretty difficult to get them exactly the same let's see we'll push this over a little bit more and i want to try and have the same amount of gap in between i think that's about an eighth of an inch in between so that when I get ready to fold it I won't have a problem now here's a problem how am I going to make sure that this stays in place when it goes through the laminator am I just gonna have to hold it I think I am oh wow it keeps moving because this is so short, it's not really holding it in place. Now I could put some washi tape on it, but I don't think that's a good idea. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do for now. Don't try this at home. <laughs> I'm gonna put a paper clip on either side and then before it feeds through, I'll remove the paper clip because I need something to hold this and like I said, this is an experiment. I didn't think it through, but I will know for the next time. So I'm gonna line those up the way that I want it. Put a paper clip here. Hopefully that'll hold it. Put a paper clip here. Now try and feed it through. And try to feed it through straight. You got to be ready to slide these paper clips off. Once it's gripped that other side, okay. All right, so that, I wouldn't want to have to do that again. <laughs> now you see how it's cloudy on the spine. That's because it's double on the spine. So I think that is another reason for cloudiness is when you use double laminate. For some, sometimes, I don't know why, laminate on laminate wants to be cloudy. So this didn't cover all the way over like I hoped it would. It did move a little, but it's not horrible. And I could make that on the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim it up and run it through again because that's what I do. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna be able to trim up the ends. So, and this is a little long for my paper trimmer, so I'm gonna have to like do a little at a time. Let's see. Okay. Let's try this in. 
And what I do is line the air bubble up with the white edge here. I hope I was not out of frame for all of that. And then usually that gives me a good trim. Now let's try it this way. It's a little extra on this edge, but I'm not going to push my luck. <laughs> I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to go ahead and round the corners. I'm going to use the quarter inch corner rounder. going to run this through again now that everything is trimmed to make sure that my edges are all good and sealed I don't think there's any way I'm going to be able to overcome the cloudiness here um, other than to put a piece of paper in there make that a pocket and put a piece of something in the spine all right so while it's hot if you can stand it, should go ahead and fold on your spine pieces. So kind of make sure that everything is lined up before you crease it completely. You can use the edge of your scissors or bone folder. Okay, yeah, so while it's hot, you need to find some way to burnish or crease the folds on the spine. I don't know why it sounds like that. Ugh. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Now, the books that I had ordered from the Dollar Tree are a little bit bigger. So I just want to make sure that they are going to fit in here. Yes. Because these are the ones that I'll be using for my holiday stickers so now I can open up the front and back pocket uh, I didn't really think of it but the spine pocket is not gonna I'm not gonna open that I mean I could but since I'm gonna be putting the strings in it it doesn't really make sense to or the elastics it doesn't really make sense to open it so this spine is bigger I wonder if I should use more holes, like do four or five. How does that work? Maybe four holes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. What is this? So we go here. So that gives one, two, three, four, five, six strings. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do four holes this time. Okay, so I tried to space those out as best as I could. Then I'm gonna take my crocodile. This is the eyelet setter by We Are Memory Keepers, and I'm gonna use the small hole. Let's see, I'm going to set it at a quarter of an inch. Uh, I think I need to do a little bit more. So we got our holes punched. I should go ahead and open the pockets, but I don't know if I want to open them on the inside or the outside or the top or the bottom. I think I'm going to open them on the top. So I'm going to use this end as the top. And I took my glasses off, which is probably 
probably not a good idea. So I'm just going to use my X-Acto knife to cut into the air bubble. Not going all the way through, just through that air bubble to open up oop, the pocket. My ruler moved. But there we go. So got a pocket here. There we go. Let's open up this one. Let's see. Okay. So what color string did I, I think I'm gonna use white this time. So one, two, three. So I'm stringing this. I've never done this with four holes. I hope I haven't made a mess, <laughs> but we'll see. So we go down. Then it's like you're weaving in and out, basically. So. Mm. Okay, so we're weaving in and out. So I'm gonna come back up here. And the reason I'm doing more holes in this one is because I'm finding that these can actually hold more photo albums, but I would have to make a jump band to do it. So with this one, I won't have to make a jump band. It'll just automatically hold it. So I'm just uh, evening out the elastics before I tie the knots. It's a lot of weaving with this many holes. Okay, so let's tighten it up a little bit because these seem a little loose. Okay, so I think I got it pretty evened up. I am just going to tie a knot. Okay. Okay. Trim off the excess and we are ready to put in some notebooks. Of course, make sure we got top at the top. Okay, so these are some of the notebooks that I want to put in here. I don't know if I want to put all four of these, but let's see how it goes. And I ordered these in bulk from Dollar Tree's website. Uh, I think it was like 12. I don't know. I think I should order them again because they are coming in handy and not having to even though i do like the ones from walmart better these aren't so bad so and they are coming in handy and it's nice to have them just on hand as i need them so okay and so i can still I still have room for two more books in here if they would fit. I'm not sure that they would, but it could happen. <laughs> okay. So, that's what it looks like. So, 
So then I could have, I do need to put a closure on here. I didn't even think of that. Uh, let me do the closure. I've had quite a few interruptions since I've been working on this. So I'm sorry if I'm doing things out of order, but yeah, we do want a closure. Uh, and then the center of this. So I need to go right there. Okay, so that's the metal. And I'm gonna have to use the big bite for this which is this and hopefully not punch through my string. We want this on the 1 8 inch hole. Bring it down just a little bit to make sure. And I'm just lining up my dot um, with, I can't show you, but I'm lining up my dot with the punch and I'm just gonna press down. Maybe I can show that part and punch through okay so that's it for the big bite then i need to go ahead and feed through my closure so i'm going to put these two through Poke these through. Okay. There we go. Okay. Let's see. All right. So there we have it and it was sit on the shelf something like this was I out of frame for most of that anyway it was sit on the shelf like this um, like that and like I said I can put whatever papers I want in the front and back and that's it so that's it for the clear pocket laminate cover sticker storage that's a long description so i hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful if you did please give me a thumbs up also make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that little gray bell so that you'll receive notification each time i upload a new video be sure to check the community tab and my stories for updates throughout the week also check us out over at patreon.com slash scrapcraftastic for exclusive content and digital downloads. Visit my other channel, Journalized Journey, for craft videos and junk journals. You can find me across social media at scrapcraftastic. Visit my website and shop at scrapcraftastic.com. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Sorry for the glare.